In this session, we're going to start off with intrinsic valuation. What is intrinsic valuation? In intrinsic valuation, the value of a business is a function of its expected cash flows, growth, and risk. It is the fundamental way of thinking about valuation, and it lies at the core of almost everything we do in valuation. During this process, we will also talk about two ways of doing intrinsic valuation. When you look at a business, you can either value the equity in the business, or you can value the entire business. Sounds mysterious, but hopefully by the end of this session, the mysteries will clear up. So let's talk about intrinsic valuation. Intrinsic valuation, as I noted, is a technique for valuing a business based on its specific characteristics. So let me cut to the chase and talk about the essence of intrinsic value. In intrinsic value, you're trying to value a business based on its cash flows, its growth, and its risk. And discounted cash flow valuation happens to be one tool that can be used to estimate intrinsic value. The reason I emphasize that is a lot of people equate the two. They think that discounted cash flow valuation is always intrinsic value, and intrinsic value is always discounted cash flow valuation. That may or may not be the truth. The other point I want to emphasize is intrinsic value is really designed for cash flow generating assets. So if you gave me a business, a stock, a young growth company, a startup, I can use intrinsic valuation. When can I not use it? Give me a Picasso to value. I couldn't give you the intrinsic value of a Picasso because it, it could entirely be in the eyes of, of the beholder. Another example, if you ask me what the intrinsic value of gold is, I have no idea. So intrinsic value is a technique designed for cash flow generating assets, whether it's a business or an individual asset. So having laid that as a basis, let's talk about discounted cash flow valuation. The equation that drives discounted cash flow valuation is a familiar one, at least for those who've taken a finance class. In fact, you probably saw it in your very first finance class. It says that the value of an asset is the present value of the expected cash flows on that asset. This is not a rocket science. People have always understood the fundamentals of discounted cash flow valuation, even before we in finance start to dress it up and make it look more sophisticated than it absolutely has to be. So in discounted cash flow valuation, it boils down to estimating cash flows and adjusting for risk. So how do you do that? There are two ways in which you can set up a discounted cash flow valuation. In the first, and this is the more common way, you get the expected cash flows on an asset or business over time, expected across all scenarios. And I want to emphasize that. If you do a true discounted cash flow valuation, you have to look at all possible outcomes, good and bad, and take an expected value across those outcomes. So the expected cash flow is just the expected cash flow. It's not risk adjusted. The discount rate is where you adjust for risk. Riskier assets have higher discount rates than safer assets. Here's the alternative. Rather than adjusting the discount rate for risk, you can try to adjust the cash flow for risk. And a lot of people don't quite understand what this means. So let me be clear about what risk adjusting the cash flows would mean. Let's assume you have $100 in expected cash flows next year, but you're uncertain about those cash flows. Your risk-adjusted cash flow will not be $100. It'll be whatever you would take as a replacement for the $100 as a guaranteed cash flow. Now think about it. If you're risk-averse and I offered you a choice between $100 of risky cash flows or some other number that's a safe cash flow, you'd probably settle for a lesser number, right? 90, 95, 92. That's called a certainty equivalent cash flow. It's a difficult thing to do, but you can do it. So those are the two faces of risk adjusting discounted cash flows. So having laid that as a basis, let's extend that. Take a look at those equations. The value of an asset is the present value of the expected cash flows discounted back at a risk adjusted discount rate, or the value of an asset is the certainty equivalent cash flow discounted back at a risk free rate because you've adjusted the cash flows for risk. Two very basic propositions flow directly from looking at that equation. They're very basic. So as I say this, you're probably saying, I knew that already, and you should. Here's the first one. For an asset to have value, its expected cash flows have to be positive at some point in time. Stating the obvious, right? But might as well state it. So if you come to me with a company that's losing money, and you tell me you expect it to lose money forever, you know what valuation model you should use for it? None. That company is worth nothing to you. So for a company to have value, its cash flows have to be positive at some point in time. The key word is some point in time. If you have a business with negative cash flows up front, 
It doesn't have to be a bad business. It could be a young startup. For that business to have value, it has to have disproportionately large positive cash flows in the future. Why disproportionately large? Because if you lose a billion dollars in year one, you better make five or 10 billion in year 10 to make up for that billion dollars in year one. So when you see me valuing young growth companies a little further down the course, don't be surprised to see these companies have negative cash flows up front. In those year one, year two, year three, that's okay. In fact, that's what you'd expect. But what you should also expect to see are very large positive cash flows down the road.